In this video, we'll cover how to connect Superbase and PowerSync. To keep it simple, we'll follow the PowerSync Superbase integration guide. And before starting, you need to have accounts with Superbase and PowerSync, both of which have a free plan available. So when using PowerSync, you change your app's read and write database from Superbase in the cloud to a SQLite database embedded directly within your app that's automatically kept in sync with Superbase in the background. This makes user interactions instant and keeps your apps working when users are offline. We'll start by creating and connecting Superbase and PowerSync projects. When you sign into PowerSync, you'll be prompted to create a new instance of the PowerSync service, and you'll have to select the source database type, which in Superbase's case is Postgres. On Superbase, we'll actually need to get some credentials that we'll input into PowerSync. So specifically your database URI on Superbase's side, which you will paste into the field in PowerSync. That'll autofill some details. And then you need to get your password for the database on Superbase and also enter that into the PowerSync modal here. And when you test that connection, it should be successful. Yeah, and then you can go on to the next step. The next step is to create some tables on the Superbase project. So on the PowerSync documentation in the guide, we can copy the script over here, which is going to create two tables for us, a lists table and a to-dos table. So we can just paste this into the SQL editor in Superbase, run it and see that it's run successfully. Now with our tables created, we can go back over to the integration guide and see that we have to also create a publication for those tables. So we can copy that SQL code as well, create a new snippet in the SQL editor in Superbase, paste it in it and run it. Command enter is a shortcut. Yeah, and that runs successfully. Okay, now we can go back to PowerSync and click next. And what it's gonna do, it's actually gonna pick up that Superbase is being used in the background. So there it says Superbase detected, and it's going to give us an option to use Superbase for our authentication. So to enable that, we'll go back over to Superbase, and we'll go to our project settings and find our JWT token. So over on API, you can scroll down and find your JWT secret. You can copy that and then just paste it into that field on PowerSync. There we go. That allows us to enable Superbase authentication. And these changes are now being deployed to this testing instance. So this, this should take a minute or so. And once that's done, we'll actually get prompted to set up sync rules. So sync rules control which data from your Superbase database gets synced down to which users or devices. So there are some dummy sync rules in the setup, but if we try and validate them, we'll see that that validation fails because it references tables that don't exist on the Superbase side. Uh, but luckily for us, we can go back over to the Superbase integration guide and just copy the sync rules that are in there, which reference the tables that we've already set up on the Superbase side. So we can just go ahead and clear all of these and enter that in there. And now when we validate it, it should validate successfully. There we go, no issues de detected. And we can save and deploy. So that's it, that is PowerSync connected to Superbase. We've um, connected to the Superbase database, we've created tables on the Superbase side, and we've set up sync rules. So that's deployed successfully. And if we go over to manage instances, we can see a bit more information about that deployment. We can see the sync rules that we've deployed as well as on the right hand side, some logs about the deployments that we've made. We can see there are two of those and how long they took. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and test with a demo app. There are a few different demo apps available on PowerSync side. I'm gonna go ahead and use our React to-do list demo app. So what I'm doing here is just creating a Superbase demo directory and cloning from the GitHub project. Uh, the next step is to install all the packages. And once that's done, I'll cd into the right folder and then copy this environment file. I'll have to open that in an IDE. And over there, I can see that I just need to replace those dummy credentials with my actual credentials. So I'll find the project URL on Superbase side as well as the um, project API key the public key. And on the PowerSync side, I need to get the PowerSync URI. 
parsing URL. So I'll copy that and then just paste it in here. And once that's done, I'll go ahead and run the dev environment. And I can open this <clears throat> locally. And there we have it. So this app will require me to log in uh, where I first need to register. Superbase will automatically ensures that you authenticate by going into your email client and validating the registration. Once you've done that, you can log in. And there you can see the to-do list app. So I'm just going to create a few items here. So I'll create a new to-do list um, and create that. And then I'll also go ahead and create some items. Uh, whoops, I think I called that item. Yeah, I'll create some to-do items uh, and just say this is item one and maybe create another one called item two. And now what we want to see is that this data is actually synced all the way back to Superbase. And there we can actually see it. So in the table editor, there are my two tables. And there is item one and item two that I just created and the first list that I called a new item. So that's it. That's how to connect Superbase and PowerSync.